right, so they got we got a Muslim brother here Let's go. who's ready to do the challenge here to prove Jesus is a Muslim. Go, yep, yep, yep. So, first condition, you got to be a Muslim. He said he's a Muslim. All right. And uh, so all I want is just historical uh, information on the life of Jesus, right? What we can know about what he believed, how he practiced his religion, to show that it matched up with Islam, that he believed in the God of Islam. I would like to start off with some like and my tour a lot to all my fellow Muslims. And I have, the, I have three solid facts that Jesus Christ was a, a Muslim. Okay. So I would like to start off with number one. He has uh, common common ways of prayer like my prophet Muhammad. He also got down on all fours to pray. That's Prostrated. number exactly. That's okay. number one. So he prays the same. Okay. Number two, the definition of a Muslim is to believe in one God. Jesus Christ believes in one God, just like me, fellow Muslim. Number three, the Holy Quran was out before the Holy Bible. If you if you understand what I'm saying, and the Holy Quran was never changed. The Holy Bible has different versions. Okay. The Holy Quran was never changed. There's only been one version for from the time of start to now. Okay. So that's just my three solid facts. Right that Jesus Christ was a fellow Muslim. Right, so just to, just, just, to, just, to sum, just, just to summarize, so Jesus prostrated, so he prayed like a Muslim, he prostrated. Yes. Point number two, he believed in one God. Yes. Right, Muslims believe in one God. That's the definition of definition. a Muslim. All right, got you. And then point number three, the Quran came before the Bible. Yes, it was never changed. There's no different versions of the Quran, it's only one Quran. All right, let me start with number three first. I think that's the quickest one. So <laughs> if um, you said the Quran came before the Bible. Of course. Okay. Did the Quran come with Muhammad, right? No. The Quran was before Muhammad. No, no, no. It was after Muhammad. After Muhammad. Muhammad had his um, f uh, how should I? Say? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to call him fellow servants because it would make him seem like companions. Slave companions or followers. Yeah. Um, that, of the Prophet. That wrote down the Quran. That wrote down the Quran. Yeah, the it. Prophet Muhammad didn't know how to uh, read, read write, talk, or anything like that. Yeah. I was told that the um, that Allah gave him the power to 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 tell to recite it exactly. And, I got and, you. And his followers writ, like wrote. It down for yeah. him and, and I got you. I got you. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So Muhammad basically gave the oral message, and his companions wrote it down. Exactly. Okay. So and that's the, all from the power of Allah. Got you. So was the Bible in existence before Muhammad was reciting the Quran? From my from my understanding, the Bible was not. Our, um, all right. So here's my question. The Quran says that it came confirming the scriptures that came before. What were those scriptures? Those scriptures before. Uh, the Torah in the gospel, right? I would, I would have to say, I would, I'm, not that, I'm, I'm trying to think right now, honestly. My, okay. I'm getting all this from my iman and my uncle, I got so you. I would just have to think back. Like, all right, it's all good. So, like, because it's, you know. Um, yeah, it's not, I'm not, I'm not, it's not an argument. Yeah, anything. exactly, I'm, exactly. That you can teach me. Yeah. I was, so, I so the Quran talks about how it came to confirm the scriptures that came before, right? The scripture that came to Moses and Jesus. So Moses got the Torah, Jesus got the gospel, mm -hmm. right? So the Bible basically is, it's those combined. So yes. the Bible has the Torah in it and it has the gospel in it, right. as well as the other writings of the prophets, okay. the Psalms by David and stuff like that. So and there is some some um, some scripts in the in the Quran, in the Quran that is kind of like the Bible, but diff kind of different. Yeah, there's some similarities that it draws similarities, to, yes. right? And which is which is why Muhammad, uh, the Quran says, if Muhammad is in, is doubting uh, the revelation that came to him, that he, he should go ask the people who've been reading the scripture before him. So because it's all in alignment. Mm -hmm. So basically, if he's doubting the Quran, if he's doubting like he's a prophet or anything like that, all he has to do is go check the scriptures and it'll it'll you know verify what he's getting okay so that would mean that the Bible existed before the Quran which would be an evidence the Quran is using for itself it's saying Jews and Christians you should believe me because I align with what you have already mm -hmm. so that so you have no excuse to reject me mm -hmm. that's the message okay all right so that's that's I think we could get rid of that one but now pr prostrating right okay so prostrating like a Muslim yeah. Let me ask you this. If I said I believe in God, I think we could tackle two at the same time. If I believe in God, right, I believe in one God, and I prostrate to this God, but the God that I'm saying that I believe in is a statue that I have. And I'm prostrating to this statue, all on fours, head to the ground. Am I a Muslim? Well, 
No, because that's, that you're praying to your statue. Exactly. So if you're just, yeah. Right. So just because I prostrate and just because I believe in one God doesn't mean I'm a Muslim. Allah, yeah. Exactly. So in order to be a Muslim, I have to believe in Allah and prostrate to Allah specifically. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, so that's that's good. I, I like you, man. You, 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 uh, we can move forward. Yeah. So with that being said, there is Allah has specific characteristics. He has mm -hmm. identifiers, how you know he's not a statue, how you know he's not a tree, right? So he's invisible, right? You can't see him. He could be all around us. He could be all around us, omnipresent. It could not be a heat. Could be, might be, yeah, right, exactly. So um, he, he does, does he have any sons? Does he have any children? Or she. Or you she? Never know. You're saying that Allah could be a she? Could be. It's an entity. It's a spirit, uh, uh, energy. So I Allah say, could be a she. Say, I would say Allah can come to any form that, that that's he could, beautiful to okay, us. Okay, I got any you. Any form that's beautiful so to us. So he can appear light, in any form. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it could be a light. It could be like I don't know. Like how should I explain? Like no, no that makes like, sense. He could be whatever he wants. Be a star, if you. Know. Yeah, right. yeah. He could come in whatever form he wants. Yes. You're saying okay, cool. So he could come in whatever form. Does he? So does he have children though? Does Allah have children? Yeah. Is he a father to you guys? I would, I would, I would say that. I would want. To you would want to say that. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to say that, you'll be coming from the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> the Bible right? says God is our Father. Yeah. But the Quran says no. No. Right. So the Quran says in chapter 19, it says that the only relationship that you can have with Allah is a slave to master relationship. You can only be a servant. You can't be a son. It says that that the heavens and the earth, if you attribute to Allah a son, that it ruptures. The mountains crumble at the utterance at the thought that Allah has a son so you can't come to him as a son you can only come to him as a servant okay if anybody says they're a son of Allah you're committing shirk blasphemy and you know he, he's gonna curse you that's yeah. what the Quran says okay so the servant is just like you would it's, it's I would say it's obligations that we have to, to serve to for yeah. Allah. Yep, obeying him, you know, mm -hmm. performing the you know the prayers the, and um, stuff the like that. Pillars and yep, the five pillars. Exactly. So, so now we know what we're talking about. Allah is not a father to anyone. He has yes. no children, right? He's invisible, he can be whatever he wants, come in whatever form he wants, but he's not a father at all. Yeah. Okay. So you brought up prostration. So in the Bible, when Jesus prostrated, mm -hmm. he said, Father, you know, uh, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, let your will be done. But the God who he's praying to and prostrating to is his father. Allah says he's not a father. Yeah. He's not the father of Jesus. He can never be a father. He's exactly. A servant, yeah. But Jesus says God is his father and that he's his son. Mm -hmm. So then that would mean that Jesus is not a Muslim or not talking about Allah at least, right? Mm -hmm. So that would mean that he's not a Muslim. So yeah, he's talking about a different God. Exactly. Exactly. He's talking about a different God. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say he's not a Muslim. Make sense? Yeah. So with that being said though, this is a problem for Islam because it doesn't just stop there. You believe Jesus, right? Yeah. You believe he told the truth about himself. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus is saying he's just a different prophet, right? He's just a different prophet. Mm -hmm. But if Jesus is saying he's the son of God, but Muhammad says, no, Jesus is not the son of God. Who do you go with? I'm going to go with my prophet. <laughs> why not? Go with my prophet. Oh, and tell me why. I really wouldn't be able to tell you why. I just grew up Muslim. Like, I got you. I don't know any other way to go. I got you. Like, so it feels like it makes more sense to me. But that's because like, a you lot grew of up things. With yeah, a lot of things that we don't believe in, like things like, uh, do you believe in bad luck? No. I, yeah, I don't either. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people do. Yeah. It's things like that, like little little things of little things that we go on the way of life mm -hmm. it makes more sense to me. But but notice how it into but by your intuition it made sense to you. It does make sense. A lot of things make sense. Like you see how we were like well, the way we talk, it could go easily go into an argument, but it's not because each one teaches one. Yeah, exactly. So absolutely, I learned a lot from from just listening. Amen. Two ears, one mouth. That's good. So what I was gonna compliment you on was your intuition. By your by his intuition, he said, yeah, I would say that God is our Father, right? It, by your by your natural thinking, mm -hmm. right? And so you're lining up with Jesus more than, with Jesus than you do with Muhammad. That's what I'm saying. You're saying what makes sense to you. I'm saying that what makes sense to you is what Jesus taught. Yeah. Jesus taught God is our Father. Muhammad says, no, God is not our Father. You naturally line with Jesus more than you do Muhammad. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but here's another thing how you can like, cause you can know what the fact is. The Quran says that it came, that what came before it is true, mm -hmm. right? The scriptures, the Torah, the Bible, the gospel, it's true. You have to believe in it. We got to judge by it, right? This is how we can judge the Quran, right? So with this being said, if the Bible is true, since it's true, Jesus says, I'm the son of God. I died for the sins of mankind and that salvation is in me. If the Quran contradicts that, then the Quran can't be true because the Bi it says the Bible is true. You know what I'm saying? If the Bible's true, the Quran is false. It can't be both. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm presenting to you today. What do you think? Of, does that make sense? What I just said? Yeah, everything makes sense. So I want you. I want you to think of this. I would say I learned a lot more. Yeah, for sure. More. Do you have? Do you have a? Things that my imam probably wouldn't tell no, me. Do you have? Do you have a Bible? Yeah, exact. They won't tell you this. Yeah. What they're gonna tell you is if you ask them about this, they're gonna say the Bible's been changed. The Bible's corrupted. We 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 don't have we don't have the original. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to get in trouble, man. I wanna, we're, we're good. It's okay. Um, you know, um, the, the Bible's been changed. They'll be going against what the Quran says. They'll tell you the Bible's been changed when the Quran says nobody can change the words of Allah. That'll be like a hypocritical. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, unfortunately, our Muslim friends who grow up with their imams and grow up in the culture, they're not being told the truth. And there's a lot of it that is hidden which is the truth about Jesus. Without Jesus, bro, there is no salvation, man. You gotta believe in what Jesus did for us. Without it, we're, we're left alone and we gotta face God's wrath. So this is why I'm saying this. And me, for me, I'm a logical thinker. I believe, and you believe this too, that the messages of the prophets is consistent, right? Yes. The prophets will all be consistent in their message, mm -hmm. right? So what we see here in the Torah, for example, we see Moses taught that the seed of the woman, the virgin birth, mm -hmm. Right? Her son is going to crush the serpent's head, but at the same time, he's going to be bruised. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. The Messiah is going to be bruised. How? We don't know yet. Then we go further. Further we go to Daniel. Daniel says, Daniel says that around the 70, around, around the, uh, yeah, yeah. In the first century, Daniel says this about the Messiah, that he's going to be cut off. The Messiah is going to come, but he's going to be cut off. He's going to do away with sin, but he's going to be cut off. He's going to be killed. So there's two. We got Moses saying that the Messiah is going to be bruised. Daniel is saying that the Messiah is going to be killed for the sins. Then we jump to Isaiah, prophet Isaiah. He says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our sins. And the Lord has laid on him the sins of us all. And his soul is an offering for our guilt. So we have Isaiah saying, the Messiah dies for us. Moses says, the Messiah dies for us. Daniel says, the Messiah dies for us. And then Jesus comes and says, what they said was about me. I came to fulfill what the prophets already said. So we see here, Moses, Daniel, David in the Psalms, uh, Zechariah, Isaiah, and then Jesus all saying the same thing, that salvation is in the Messiah. But then Muhammad comes later and says, no, Jesus is not your, the, your Lord. He did not die for your sins, and he's not the son of God. So who do we go with? All the prophets who are saying the same thing, or do we go with Muhammad who contradicts them? Who do we go with if you're if you're if you're using your brain? I would. It's all on like who you would like who you would who you believe in. Like what do you believe in? We believe in all the prophets. You believe in all the prophets too, right? Yeah, but I'm, believing, I'm going with Muhammad. So would you go with the prophet that contradicts the rest? That's if that's if that's my choice. Then it is your choice. You do have yeah, a choice. That's, that's my choice. I wouldn't say that he's contradicting the rest, but he is. It's everything else is like all right. It's, I would say it's, it's a different way of, of of going about it. All right. So Jesus, like all these different prophets, have different have different ways on telling you what to do on how to do it on getting into heaven and things like they that. don't like, they really do though. no listen this is what i'm saying all the prophets said to get to heaven you got to go through the messiah all of them said that jesus said it he said i'm the way i'm the truth i'm the life no one goes to the father except through me so he's the only about, way so what's up what about when the um when muhammad said uh 
to complete the five pillars, you'll be able to go through, go to heaven. See, and that, and that's the, that's the different message from the prophets. Mm -hmm. Muhammad is teaching that you can, if you do this, this, and this, this, and this, mm -hmm. you may be able to get paradise. It's not even guaranteed, mm -hmm. but Allah might give you mercy, and you can get paradise. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a different message than the, what the prophets taught. Exactly what I'm saying. Like, that's why that's why I just said earlier when I said the the prophets have different ways of going about things. But and the, what I'm saying is that the prophets they had the same way, but Muhammad is the only one who had a different way. They all said Messiah is the way to God. Muhammad says, do this, this, and this, and this, and you might get to God. So he's his. You might say that that Muhammad's uh, ways are might, might be a little strict or, 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 or just different in, in general. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say strict. I would just say it goes against what God said from His prophets. I wouldn't say it goes against it because what what Muhammad is telling you to do isn't. It's not like it's not committing sins. You know what I'm saying? Committing it, sins is, is going against what God. No, he does. He does tell you. To, you he, Muhammad gives you uh, uh, an outlet to commit adultery. He says, like for example, this is chapter four, verse twenty-four. Right? Adultery is when you have sex with someone who's not your wife, right? Mm -hmm. You have sex or sex with a married person. That's that's adultery. God says in the Torah and in the gospel, I'll, I'll tell you what Moses says, and God says in the Torah, he says, thou shall not commit adultery. You don't even look at another man's wife. Do not covet her, don't want her, right? Jesus says this in the gospel. He says, even if you look at a woman and lust after her, like undress her with your eyes, then you've committed adultery with her in your heart. That's what Jesus says. All right, one, as a Muslim, I don't, I don't point out other, other sins, so I wouldn't even say anything about it. I would turn my head. So Good. two, two. But, but, wait, wait, but, thing before is, you continue, before you, you continue, you can't really say that. Um, that he's telling, like he's telling you to commit sins because a lot of things that certain, I wouldn't say like. I don't want to point them out, but a lot of things that certain Christians do uh, is, a, is a sin. Like, it's 2024 now, and yeah, yeah, Christians are pointing you to say that it's okay to be a, a, homo, a homophobe. Like they're not Christians. Gay. They're not Christians. But, 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 but some of them not, are telling you that they that they believe in Jesus Christ. They they're believe not, in God. And, and they will be spit They have whole rallies. We're standing right now. You're, you're right. The same thing. You're right, and so they're, not, they're not My Christians. God never told me I can, I can kiss a man. Yeah, and my God. And, might, and, and and say, it might be bad that I, I, I kiss someone else female, but at least she was a female. You know what I'm saying? Here's what I'm saying. If, you're, if there's people that's saying that they're Christians by name, but they're going against what Jesus taught and what the Bible teaches, they're not Christian. You know what I'm saying? They're not Christian. They can claim it all they want. They're not Christian. So you're pushing, you would push them away, basically. Uh, no, I'm calling them out. Just like just like Jesus said. Jesus did the same thing. He called out the false, the false leaders and the false religious people. He called them out and called them to the truth. The most loving thing we can do is call people to the truth, even if it hurts them, right? Even if it hurts their feelings and goes against what they believe, we got to call them to the truth regardless of how they feel and so what I'm saying is is that you have Jesus and, Mo and Moses who taught against adultery but Muhammad said that if you you know married women are forbidden for you you can't have sex with married women except those who you capture in war if you capture a married woman in war she's still married her husband is alive you can sleep with her still because she now belongs to you so he gives you an excuse to commit adultery to commit it's sin. Mm -hmm. So that so, is. Wait, but as you're saying this, you don't think that was a dip? Like, what year was that? The good what question. year was that? Yeah, but here's the point. I'm Watch not this. going to capture anyone in war right now and, and, and keep it. But, but, no, but notice this, because there's there's battles that happen, right? It's different age so, time. So a lot of things have changed. Yeah, but Moses is before Muhammad, right? Moses is way before Muhammad. Mm -hmm. In Deuteronomy, in the law of Moses, the law of to the Torah, it talks about how to deal with captive women. And it says, if you see a captive woman that you find beautiful, right? Give her time to mourn, take her captive clothes off of her, and if you want to marry her, marry her, and then you're able to go into her and have sex. And if you guys aren't happy, let her go wherever she wants. You are not to treat her like a slave, nor are you to sell her, but let her go wherever she wants. Mm -hmm. So the Bible teaches you how to deal with a captive woman if you go into war with another nation. But later is that, on... Is that woman not captive? She's a captive woman, but you're to marry her if you want if you want her. But if, in order for me to marry her, she would have to have been captive. You know, no, not, not necessarily. You can you go meet her. That. No, what I'm saying is in the, in, the con in the context of war, if you're talking about in the context of war and like then you capture them that's what i'm saying so as a captive woman how to deal with a captive you have to marry her if you want her you can't just have sex with her you can't commit adultery i have two women right here that still looks like this seems like it's captive like it's not it's still not something that the woman chose either no, way it go no, we they, have to 
to have captured to, them um, first. Uh, to be married as a choice. But look, you captured her. You, she was captured before that. And now she's living in, in your nation now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's living in your nation. That's that's not really like, I feel like that probably wasn't it, a choice, but like that's something that you pushed her into doing. So if, if, it, if it all sounds better to you, if you, the way you word I mean, it, so you word it to make it sound better, so then that, it sounds if, better. If, if that's the case, why does the Bible say then, if they're not ha if she's not happy with you, let her go wherever she wants? Like, I, like, like, like you just said, if it makes it sound better, it makes it sound better. That's, that, that's just what it says. It says it, it sounds a little bit better, but in the beginning, it's, it's kind of the same. So you it's captured. not the same because you're, you're she's still captured. So in the Quran, you're, tell me if it's the same. In the Quran, no, I'm, it says, I'm going off what you just tell. Okay, so if the, if, I gotta go, so I'm gonna take a picture okay. with you real quick. We'll see you, bro. All right. Love you, Chloe. Love you, so tell me if this is the same. You have a captive oh. woman, you see, you have to marry her in order to have her. You can't have her unless you marry her. Okay, but versus right. another one, hold on. Versus she the other one her? where Do I she have her in my possession. Is no, bro, no, captive. she, no. This is what I'm saying, bro. Like, it's like, yeah, I don't I'm confused know. with the captive part. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, so okay, what's, so what's confusing? Captive. All right, so captive, as in like. If you, go to, look, if you go to war, go to war, you go to war with a nation, you win the war. So now everybody, they're your, they're your captives. Yeah, that's men and like, Men and women. Kidnap them basically. Like, not, 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 it's not, you're in war. It's not kidnap, you're in war. Okay? Yes. You're in war. So you have captives now. So and now you have captives, you see a beautiful woman. God says, if you want her, you have to marry her and treat her right. The Quran says, she's a captive, you can do whatever you want. You can sleep with her even if she's married. Which one just sounds like God to you? They're both, to me, their sounds, they're both the same thing. Like, they're both, they sound, they're both wrong. Basically what I'm saying, both of those scenarios are wrong. Okay. So I'm not saying that either one is right. That's basically what I'm trying to say. If, if, you, if, you, understand what I, if you understand what I'm saying. Both, to me, both of those scenarios sound wrong to me. Okay, so this, so this is where I we're I wouldn't at. agree with neither one of my prophets, if, 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 you, if you understand what I'm saying. So then you, have, so then you, must, you should leave Islam. Then. Yeah, I wouldn't agree with that. Then you should leave Islam, because that's what it teaches. I wouldn't say that I should leave Islam that just because I don't agree with that one thing you, that you, you just said. But did you know that your Quran says that you can't be in any resistance to what Muhammad says and be a real believer? This is chapter 4 verse 65. It says, you by, but no, you will not truly believe, you're not a true believer, unless you make Muhammad your judge and submit to his decisions with full submission and find no resistance in yourself. So you can't disagree with nothing Muhammad has said. So if he says, yeah, you can go, if you got a captive woman, you can have sex with her, even if she's married. And you disagree with that, you're not a real believer. My choice to have the captive woman, right? No. I don't have to choose to take a woman captive. Doesn't mean I, that, that doesn't mean that- I don't think you know how war I works. Have, I do know how the war works. I have how war a choice. Works. War. What do you mean? We're, we're, the world is at war right now, so, 2024. There's no one getting captive and-, and You do, you have, yeah, there's prisoners like, of war. That's what it's called. No, nah, I'm, I'm saying like the way you were making it seem as captain, like captain, like that's like kidnapping a woman and just taking they're her. Not, they're not in bonds. They're not in, they're not in bondage. They're allowed to live amongst you, yeah. but under your, under your nation now. Yeah, I understand. I understand that. Yeah, so they're not in bondage. They're not slaves. You know. So you, so you just taking them to your. They're in your nation, your nation now. now. Okay. Yes. Okay. So they're in your nation I, now. I, and so they have the freedom to marry you or not. Okay. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. But yeah. in, but in Islam, it's not. It's, it's not, not the same. Not, no. It's not the same. That's you're, that's your captive, and that's they call it your right hand possession. It means you have rights to that. They're yeah. your property now. That's your possession. So that's the difference. What I'm showing. You. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I fully understand. So that's what I'm showing. The prophets talk different. I feel like that's my choice, though. If you understand what I'm saying, if I was put in that position right now in war, if I would want to take a woman captive, yes, you're right. I would have the choice to take a woman captive. You're right. If my heart doesn't desire to take that woman captive. I would not take that woman captive. I hear what you're saying. So here's the, this is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about your choice. I'm talking about what did Muhammad teach. So Muhammad I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm is saying what he is, taught, what, but every Muslim like me has the choice to go with. Him. Exactly. So, but but here's what I'm saying. If you go against what Muhammad said. You're not a true believer. That doesn't that doesn't mean that. That, that doesn't look, mean that at all. 465 of the Quran. It doesn't mean that at all. You are not a believer until you make Muhammad your judge and have no resistance against his decisions. You can't resist like, anything. So you want to for me to be a believer in Muhammad, you're trying to tell me I have to take a woman captive and make her my slave. I'm saying that you can't say that that's wrong. You can't disagree I, with that. But I don't have to do it. No, you don't have to do it, but you can't disagree with it. But I don't have to do it. Correct. So if I'm not doing it, 
then do you disagree with it? Agreeing? Do you disagree with it? Am I fully agreeing with it though? No, I'm just asking. But am I fully you. agreeing with it, or am I am I even fully disagreeing with it? Well, that's that's what I'm, I'm asking. Just not doing it. I'm just not well, doing well, it. This is the question. Do you agree that that's okay? Do you think that's okay, or do you think it's wrong? It's okay for you to do it if you want to. If you feel like that's okay, then you can do that. Me personally. But earlier you said you it was a choice for you to do that. I'm not the one to even point your sins out. But that's er not, that's earlier not, you said that me. that was wrong to do. No, for you, if you want to do that, that's you. I'm not, is it I'm wrong? Not saying that, yeah, for, for, if I want to do it, it would be wrong. No, no, is it wrong, period? Yeah. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. If you, When you say that that's wrong, then you're disagreeing with Muhammad. Yeah, okay, so look, let me say this, right? If I say that it's wrong, cool, I get that. I say it's wrong. But it's not me to tell you what is right and what's wrong. No, but you do know. You have a, you have a moral I don't compass. Point, I don't point, but I'm not pointing out your flaws or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't but, point out your sins. But, you, but if you love me, you should. If you love me, you would say, hey, man, you need to step away from this type of action. That's wrong. If I loved you I, and, and I saw you getting ready to put your hand over fire, I would pull your hand away from that fire and be like, hey, yo, what are you doing? Because I love you. Yeah. I don't want you to burn yourself. I understand what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? So if because I love you, I won't allow you to, or I'll at least let you know, hey, man, the direction you're going is wrong. It leads to hellfire. It goes against God. You know what I'm saying? That's what love is. And because I love you, I'm telling you that Jesus says he's the only way to salvation, not Muhammad. And if you continue with Muhammad, you don't have salvation. That's what Jesus himself teaches. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So consider this, man. Think about it. Do you have a Bible? Yeah, I do have a home. You have a Bible? I have a Bible and a Quran. Perfect. Okay. So what I want you to do, read the book of John. Start there if you want. Just read the book of John, okay? And it tells you about Jesus. It tells you who he is. Is, mm -hmm. what he claims about himself, what he says, and you'll fall more in love with him the more you read about him, I promise you. I'm not gonna, I never said I hated him. <laughs> no, 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 I, I, but what I'm saying is, at, at this moment, you don't know him. And if you knew him, you would never even give a second thought about Muhammad or anybody else. It'll be all Jesus, I promise you. Take care of yourself, man. You appreciate it, come here, man. I appreciate the conversation. Hey guys, let's give it up for our friend here, man. I appreciate it. Um, oh!